Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'll be discussing the differences between finasteride generics and the brand name drug Propecia. If you or someone you know is considering using finasteride for male pattern baldness, it's essential to understand these differences to make an informed decision. Let's dive in. Finasteride is the active ingredient in Propecia, a medication that's used to treat male pattern baldness and benign prosthetic hyperplasia. When the patent for Propecia expired, various pharmaceutical companies started producing generic versions of the drug. Although both generics and the brand name Propecia contain the same active ingredient, there are some key differences that you should be aware of. One notable difference between Finasteride generics and the brand name Propecia is the inactive ingredients. While inactive ingredients don't affect the therapeutical action of the drug, they can influence factors like appearance, taste, or shelf life. In some cases, individuals might have sensitivities or allergies to specific inactive ingredients in one version but not the other. The amount and type of inactive ingredients can potentially affect the bioavailability of a drug. Inactive ingredients may enhance the solubility, absorption, release, or the stability of the drug, which can in turn impact its bioavailability. However, regulator authorities like the FDA require generic medications to demonstrate bioequivalence to the brand name drug, ensuring that any differences in inactive ingredients do not significantly impact the drug's overall effectiveness. Another difference lies in the manufacturing process. Generic medications are produced by various pharmaceutical companies, each with its own manufacturing process and quality control measures. Although these companies must adhere to good manufacturing practices and meet regulatory standards, Slight variations in the process can lead to minor differences in the final product. However, these products should not significantly impact the safety or efficacy of the medication. This is why it's important to get your finasteride from approved manufacturers and not just some shady website on the internet because oftentimes those approved manufacturers have to go through regulation requirements, have to get building inspections to make sure that their processes in creating these generic drugs are valid. And if you're getting your finasteride from some sort of gray market shady website or dealer for that matter, they may not have adequate formulations of the generic finasteride. I would definitely check the ingredients of the particular generic finasteride brands that you may be getting because let's say for example you took finasteride and then you got some sort of rash or you were just experiencing some weird side effect, perhaps there may be an inactive ingredient in that particular generic brand of finasteride that you're reacting to. So it's always worth looking at the ingredients and also consulting your healthcare physician. You can go to websites like drugs.com to get a full detail look at your particular finasteride generic. You just simply have to look at the imprint on the drug itself. So mine is J81. And if I look up that particular drug imprint for finasteride on drugs.com, I can see the list of inactive ingredients. And this particular finasteride that I'm using is manufactured by Arubindo Pharma Limited. So it works for me and I don't have any issues with this particular generic. And I think if you're interested, you should definitely check it out or find something that works for you. Also, generics often differ from brand name drugs in terms of the appearance, such as color, shape, or markings. These differences are due to varying inactive ingredients or branding requirements, but they do not affect the drug's efficacy. So in summary, while some differences exist between finasteride generics and the brand name Propecia, these differences typically do not impact the safety or efficacy of the drug. However, individual reactions or sensitivities to certain inactive ingredients or variations in bioavailability may require some attention. It's always essential to consult with a healthcare professional before starting or switching between different versions of a medication. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and maybe even subscribe for more informative content.